Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, we will start designing this responsive image gallery from scratch using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now I'll split this video into several parts where in the first video we will just create the design. So first of all, let me show you how it looks. So this is uh, uh, the image gallery and here we can see there are six images right here. And if I click on any of these images, we can see that the image is being displayed over here in this light box. And uh, here we have this title displayed over here for the image. And here we also have the next and the previous button. So if I click on the next button, we are taken to the next image. And if I click on the previous button, we are taken to the previous image. And we also have these buttons over here. So this button is for closing the light box. And we also have a button to download the image. So if I want to download this image, I'll just click on this uh, download button right here. And we can see that the image is being downloaded. And if I click on this uh, image, we can see that the image has been downloaded to our system. And if I want to download another image, I'll just uh, go to that image over here. And for example, if I want to download this image, I'll just click on download over here. And if I open this, we can see that the image has been downloaded. So this is how our uh, image gallery is going to look. It is also responsive. So if I decrease the width of the screen, here we can see we have two images in a row. And uh, if I decrease the screen even more, we have one image in a row. So this is totally responsive. So let's get started. Alright, so I have opened up this folder called the image gallery inside this code editor VS code. So here I also have a folder called images. And in that we have all these images, which we are going to use in our image gallery. So let's start by creating an index.html file. So let's click on new file and uh, let's create a file called index.html and uh, we'll create one more file for the CSS. So we'll just name it style.css and we also need one more file for the JavaScript. So let's name it main.js. All right, so let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS Code, you have the shortcut where you can just press exclamation and press tab and you will have this basic HTML5 code. And let's also link our CSS file over here. So I'll just type link and press tab. And in the href, I'll just type style.css. And we'll also link our JavaScript file over here. So I'll just type script colon src and tab. And here I'll just type main.js. Right, first of all, let's create an h2 and we'll just type image gallery over here. All right, now let's open this design in our browser. So I have this extension called live server in VS Code. So you can just search for live server over here and just install it. And after that, you can just right click over here in the HTML and click on open with live server. And here we can see that our heading is being displayed over here. So let's start by creating a container division to hold everything. So let's create a division with the class of image gallery container. And in this we'll have a division with the class of images and in that we will have several images. So let's create a division with the class of image and in that we will have the img tag. So let's type img and I'll just type images slash and here we can see these images right here. So it is inside this folder images. So let's select the first image and then we also need to have a title. So let's create a division with the class of title and uh, I'll just type surfing the web. So this is the title for the first image. So let's go back to our design and here we can see we have this first image and we also have the title over here. Now in the same way, let's create all the other images. So we have six images in total. So let's copy this and uh, let's paste it five more times. And let's change the source of all these images. So this is image number two and this is image number three. And then we have image number four and then we have image number five. And then lastly, we have image number six. So here we can see all the images are being displayed over here. Now I'll just quickly change all these titles over here. All right, I have changed the titles of all the images. Now let's start with the light box. So the light box is the viewer that displays the image in a larger size. So here outside this uh, images division, right here, let's create a division with the class of light box. And in this, we'll create a division with the class of image. And in that, we'll have an IMG tag. And for the source, we'll just have images1.jpg for now, just for testing. Later, we will add different images based on which image you click using JavaScript. 
but for now let's just add the first image for testing and uh, we also need to have a title so let's create a division with a class of title and here we will just type testing so if you scroll down here you can see this is the light box and uh, here we have testing displayed over here now let's create the previous and the next buttons so let's create a division with a class of previous button and here we need to add the icon of the previous button and for that we will use font awesome so just search for font awesome 5 cdn and you will find this link of cdnjs.com so let's go to the website and let's copy this all.min.css from here so let's click on copy link tag and I'll just paste it over here in the head section alright now let's add the icons so here I'm in the official website of fontawesome.com and let's search for the icon that we need so let's type previous and here we can see all these icons so we'll be using this icon called chevron left so let's click on the icon and let's copy this code and let's go back to our HTML and here in the previous button we'll just paste the code and if you go back to our website here we can see we have the previous button now in the same way let's create a division for the next button so I'll just copy this and paste it down here and I'll just name it next button and here instead of chevron left I'll just type chevron right and we can see both the icons are being displayed over here Right now let's add the download and the close buttons so let's go outside this image division and here we'll create a division with a class of options and in that we'll have an anchor tag and for now we'll just type hash over here and in the anchor tag we will have an icon so let's copy this uh, code from here and let's paste it over here and here we'll just type fa download so this is the download icon so here we can see the download icon and let's also create one more division with a class of close button and uh, here we'll just paste the code and uh, here we'll just type fa times and here we can see the close button so all the elements in our website are ready now let's start styling this page so let's go to our style.css file and first of all let's style the h2 so we'll just set a font family of roboto and sans serif and we'll text align it to the center and we'll also set a font size of 40 pixels right now let's start with the image gallery container so let's type image gallery container and we'll set the font family of the image gallery to roboto as well right now in the image gallery container we have a division with the class of images so let's target that image gallery container images and we'll set the max width to 800 pixels and we'll set the display to grid so let's type display grid and we also need to set the width of the img tag so let's type image gallery container images img and let's set the width to 100 percent and also the height to 100 percent and we'll set the object fit to cover so that the image is not stretched now here in this images division we have already set the display to grid now we have to specify how many elements should be in a single row so let's type grid template columns and here if I type 1fr 1fr we can see that there are two elements in a row and if I add one more 1fr over here we will have three elements in a row now for example if I add 1fr and 100 pixels here we can see we have 100 pixels of image over here and the rest of the image is taken by the first image which is 1fr so the 1fr will take up all the remaining space that it has now for example if I type 1fr and 2fr here we can see this element has half the width of the other element so in this way we can specify how many elements should be in a row now we're going to make it responsive so we're going to use a function called repeat so let's type repeat and here we're going to use a keyword called autofill and then we'll type comma min max and here we will type 240 pixels comma 1 fr so here we are telling the grid to repeat this code right here and uh, we are setting a min max value over here so it will have a minimum width of 240 pixels and it can extend up to any value over here so here we have this image gallery first of all let me just bring it to the center so here I'll just type margin 0 for top and bottom and auto for left and right. 
So now here we can see we have three images in a row because it has space to accommodate three 240 pixels value. And if I just uh, remove this max width from here, we can see that there are more images in a row. Now all these images have at least 240 pixels of width each. So now if we decrease the width of the screen, we can see that if the width of the image is less than 240 pixels, then it moves to the next line over here. So in the same way, if we decrease the screen size again, after a certain point, we can see that it goes to the next line. So in this way, it will be completely responsive. So let me just go back and uh, uncomment this. And we'll also add a gap between all these images. So let's type gap and we'll set it to 8 pixels. And now we can see we have a gap of 8 pixels between all these images. And let's also hide the titles that we have over here. So we will add the title in the light box and we will hide all the titles from these images right here. So here we can see a little bit of the title is being displayed over here under this image. So let's go back over here and let's type image gallery container images title and let's set the display to none. And now we can see that the titles are not being displayed. So that's it with the styling of these images. Let me just hide this light box for now. So I just type image gallery container light box and display none. And here we can see this is how our image gallery looks right now. Now the last thing we need to have for these images is that when you hover over this we need to have a pointer. So here for the image, let's target the image class. So I'll just type image container images image and let's set the cursor to pointer. Right now when we hover over this we have this uh, pointer. Alright that's it with the CSS of this image gallery. Now in the next video I'll show you how to style the light box. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching have a nice day.